The biggest difference between a very good pool player and an amateur pool player is their consistency when it comes to shot making. So in this video, I'm going to show you the five most common reasons why you are still missing shots and of course, how to fix them. The beginning is information that will help you tremendously if you're still a beginner. And if you're more advanced, then definitely watch the video till the end because the further we progress, the deeper we're actually getting into the topic. And I will also reveal why I'm missing my shots probably 80% of the time. So first of all, what is the most common reason you're missing shots in pool? Well, obviously it's because you're aiming wrong. And I remember when I was a beginner, this was my biggest struggle. I didn't know where to aim on the ball. But in reality, aiming the ball or knowing exactly where you have to aim is not that difficult because have a look at the following situation. So we have this ball and here this shot is a straight in shot. So you're basically having a zero degree cut because you're hitting it full in the face. Now let's go to the other extreme. Let's say the cue ball is here. So here you basically or you almost have a 90 degree cut. So whenever you're playing a shot on a pool table, you will always face the same shot. You just have a cut between zero and 90 degree. And let's say we just divide um, those cut shots into um, three degree steps. So for example, here you have a zero degree cut, then three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on. So basically in total, you just have 30 different shots and 30 different shots aren't that much to learn. And if you master those 30 different cut shots or degrees or cutting angles, then you basically can play any shot on a pool table. So all it requires is of course, put in the time, practice, and just very important, observe what happens. So yesterday I had a student over and we were playing or practicing this shot. And what he did is he always played this shot, as you can see, way too thick. And this is something that happens very often if you're a beginner. You just don't see the angles and where exactly you have to aim. And this is where just observing the situation is really important because he was playing the shot and then he didn't know what happened. And I had to tell him, well, you missed the shot you fix, so you have to aim thinner. So just observing what happens can actually help you tremendously. So the next time you know, okay, if I want to send the one ball into this direction, because this is what it's all about, sending the object ball into a certain direction, the shot doesn't look like this, because if it looks like this, then I'm sending the object ball into this direction. So it's very important to understand this. You want to send the object ball into this direction. So of course the shot I know has now to look like this because then the object ball actually goes into this direction. And this is really, really important. You're not trying to make the ball or you're not trying to hit a certain part on the object ball. If I would start to actually think about which part of the object ball I need to hit, I wouldn't make a single ball. This is very important. I'm just trying to send the object ball into a certain direction. And if you're then playing this shot, and you try to send the object ball towards the pocket, and you hit it like this, you know, okay, I have the right imagination and how it should look if the object ball has to travel into this direction. And if you hit it too thick or too thin, you have a new information and believe me, this can go really, really fast that you actually know how you have to aim every single ball on the table if you're not using side spin, of course. But once you start introducing side spin into your game, which you definitely have to at one point, then you're also introducing a new factor that can make you miss the shot. So it's very important to understand the physics behind using side spin. So this means how the path of the cue ball changes on its way to the object ball and also how the path of the object ball changes when you're making contact and the cue ball has spin on it. So I remember when I was a beginner, maybe playing like one or two years, then I didn't know about the effects of side spin. And I was facing, for example, this shot. I knew a little about the cue ball, so I knew, okay, with no spin, the cue ball probably goes towards here. So let's just use some right spin, open the angle and have a nice shot on the two ball. So I had my base shots, I knew how it has to look, if I try to send the object ball into this direction with no spin. So I went behind the shot. I'm using right spin here. I was aiming to my usual spot. And then this happened. You can see I missed the shot and not just by a little, but by a whole lot. And I had no idea what happened because I didn't know about the physics. And this is really dangerous because if you don't know about the physics, and how everything changes with side spin, then you can actually harm what you've already learned because now you should already know 
how it has to look with no spin if you want to send the object ball into this direction. But if you're then using side spin and you miss the shot by a mile and you don't know what happened, you second guess yourself and you maybe overwrite uh, already right information that you already have saved in your brain, in your muscle memory. So it's very important to understand the physics. And I have a very good video, the link is in the video description. And don't worry, even this video might be overwhelming, it's not that difficult. Once you've understand the general concept, you don't have to learn plenty of new shots, it still stays the same principle. I know how it has to look with no spin if I want to send the object ball into this direction. And then I just know how I have to adjust with side spin, with right spin and a medium speed, a hard speed, a soft speed, with left spin, vice versa. So here on this shot, for example, I don't have to think about it a whole lot. I'm just going down and I'm using the side spin and I have a really nice shot on the two ball. So if you put in the practice hours, this becomes really, really, I wouldn't say easy, but very manageable. The only danger is when you're using unintentional side spin. So let's take this shot, for example, where we just have a straight in shot, which should probably be one of the easiest shots, but it isn't. And we're just trying to play a stop shot here. And now you use unintentional side spin. So you're trying to hit the center, but you use some left spin and then you miss the shot. So unintentional side spin is very dangerous. And this is where sound fundamentals really come into play. If you look at the professional players, especially the young ones, they all have very, very fine tuned fundamentals. And this is just so important because of course you can know how it has to look, where you have to aim, how the side spin changes the path of the cue ball and of the object ball. If you aren't able to deliver the stroke exactly the way you've intended, then of course you're going to miss the shot. So for example, on this long straight in shot, if your technique is bad, so for example, you're standing wrong, your arm up is a bit to the outside, you're holding the cue way too tight, and then you're trying to make that ball, which I accidentally did here, um, but then most of the time you're going to miss. This is why you definitely have to practice your fundamentals. This is no fundamental video, so check out the link in the video description again. Very, very quick. Sound fundamentals mean you are able to just deliver the cue in a straight line. This is the most important thing. Yes, there is a textbook um, stance, there is a textbook stroke, a textbook way how to hold the cue, but as long as you're able to deliver the cue in a straight line, which is the most important thing, then you can actually stand a bit to this side, hold it a bit differently. Of course, if everything is aligned perfectly in line, that it's just automatically a straight motion, this makes things easier. But as I mentioned, whenever I'm practicing my fundamentals, I'm not focusing on my stance, on my hand. No, I'm just focusing on my cue. If my cue actually travels straight towards here, the eight ball or the heart of the pocket. And if I then notice that my cue after the shot points not into the heart of the pocket, then I know, okay, my stroke wasn't right. Fundamentals, real quick, are very, very important. You have your pre-shot routine, which is very important. You have your stance you have your grip, you have your stroke, you have your eye alignment, there is really a lot to it, but your stroke is really one of the most beautiful things you can have in the game because you can work on it forever and I'm still working on my stroke and I just love a pure stroke and how good it feels if you're making a shot with a really nice stroke and if you can just rely on your stroke, just you can see heart of the pocket, it's so lovely. So it's really a lot of fun to actually work on your stroke and improve your stroke. And this is really one of the most important things if you're developing your game, if you know how the shots have to look, how you have to aim with side spin, then it comes the time where you really have to work on your stroke, on your fundamentals, on your pre-shot routine, because this will make you more and more consistent because just knowing how the shot has to look or knowing how you have to adjust your aim doesn't mean that you will always um, make the shot because as I mentioned, you can twist your arm a bit to the left, a bit to the right, you can add unintentional side spin, you cannot finish your stroke. And for me personally, the biggest reason why I'm missing shots probably around 70, 80% of the time is just a mental mistake. And yes, if you're a beginner, this sounds a bit crazy. Why would a mental mistake be um, related to missing a shot. Well, there are plenty of reasons why you're missing a shot. Let's take one of my students, for example. This is a really interesting story. He has really solid fundamentals. He has a perfectly straight stroke and he's missing so many shots whenever we're playing 
practicing or competing. It's crazy and I can't understand. And this one time he came to me and he told me, I can't make a single straight in long shot. So for example, this shot. He showed me the shot and he always missed the shot, even though, as I mentioned, his fundamentals are really, really solid. So I was looking at him and he was down. He was doing his usual thing and he just missed the shot and he didn't know what was, what was going on. So I told him, let's do a little experiment, very, very easy. We don't care what happens if you make the shot or if you miss the shot, that's not the task here. What we wanna do is just do everything that you're usually doing, go down on the shot, but with one exception, when you're down on the shot and if you're ready to shoot, so if you're doing your pre-strokes and if you're ready, then I want you to just look away and then just concentrate on pushing the cue forward in a straight line and just trying to feel your arm and feeling the straight stroke. And guess what happened? He made around, I think, six, seven or even eight of those straight in shots in a row because he just finally started not caring about if the ball is going into the pocket or not. He just worried about pushing the cue forward in a straight line. And this is the most important thing. Just trying to push the cue forward in a straight line. This takes all the pressure of you. So, I talked about it in a recent video, but really quick. Um, whatever I'm doing before I'm going down on the shot decides if I'm going to make the shot. So very often, if you're playing a tournament, you know the struggle, you're going down on the shot, and then you start thinking, okay, a bit more left spin, hmm, a bit more aiming to this side. Uh, I just, I'm going to hit a bit harder. Yeah, still a bit more left spin, and you missed the shot. So this was a mental mistake because you did so many things, you didn't shut your brain when you were down on the shot. So it's very important to have a completely clear expectation what you were going to do before you're going down on the shot. So looking at the angle, deciding the speed that you're going to play, the spin, how you have to aim. And once you're down, your mind should be completely silent. And you're just trying to replicate what you've already did. And this was his mistake. He was trying too much to make the ball. Another situation that happened yesterday, which was also a mental mistake, we were playing a tournament and uh, one of the players was faced with this 5-9 combination. It was his hill hill and it was almost sitting perfect and he ended up with this layout of the balls. So he was seeing it, he was going down and he missed the shot. So was the mistake that he was aiming wrong? No. The mistake was that he just rushed the shot. He was playing really, really sloppy. I don't know what was going on in his mind. If he just was afraid of missing the shot or if he wanted to impress, I have no idea. But this was a mental mistake and you will never see any pro player do this. No pro player sees this combination, just fires it in. Um, of course, if it sits that way, then of course they're probably going to do this. But no pro player is going to play that sloppy. So playing too fast, too sloppy is also a mental mistake. There is this one player, for example, that I always see at our local pool hall. So eight ball situation, he doesn't first of all go around, look where he wants to be, which is already a mental mistake. Then he goes down, fires the ball in, he goes, you can see from the side into the shot, missed the shot, and he's left with this shot, which is probably going to miss. So he was playing way too fast, way too sloppy, no pre-shot routine, no preparation, no visualization, all of this are just mental mistakes. So yes, of course, you can play fast. That's totally fine. And I sometimes also play fast, but I'm still concentrating on my fundamentals, on my pre-shot routine, even if it happens really quickly. So when I'm playing very slow, I do it like this. Go behind the shot, doing my pre-strokes, then going down, then shooting the ball. and I'm standing up. You can see all of this is very slow and very controlled, but I can also do this a lot faster. So let's say the ball ends up like this. So here you can see now I'm going towards here. You can see how fast it went, but I still had a pre-shot routine. I was still concentrated. Whereas the player that I was just talking about would do it like this. You can see the difference. I mean, um, his shot or his um, pre-shot routine, or if you actually can call it this, looks really rushed. Whereas mine, even if I'm playing fast, I'm taking this brief moment, as you can see when I'm standing, where everything, every calculation happens in my mind. 
So once again, have a look, going behind this shot. Did you see that slight pause that I did when I was standing here? Here, I've aligned myself properly. I was doing all the calculations. Then I'm going down and I should be aligned properly. And then I just have to cue straight. So this is the difference, which is also a mental mistake. You can see the mental aspect is really, really huge in pool. And of course, sometimes you can't do anything about it if you're in a match, especially if you haven't played the tournament for a long time, which happens for me regularly because I don't play tournaments that often. Then I can even miss shots like this because, of course, my arm is shaking a bit, especially in the beginning of the tournament. I'm still nervous, so I can't really stroke it, and the arm is a bit shaky, and I'm trying to somehow make it. Of course, I made it here because here is no pressure. There are some techniques that you can use, which is breathing, which is um, some meditation, kind of meditation, some mindset and stuff like this. But I can't talk about this on YouTube because probably no one will watch or just a tiny amount of people will watch a video about the mental game. And I highly doubt that over 50% are watching this part of this video. So if you're interested in this, check out my Patreon page and also my shop with the 30 secret drills and videos where a small portion is about the mental game. And uh, if you like this video, then leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to this channel for more. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.